This is a video about the iPhone 5S. I just purchased this iPhone 5. I've been using it for a week now. I got it from uh, T-Mobile, as you see there. Um, T-Mobile got me a really good deal on this phone. It's the 64 gigabyte version um, 5S in the black color. And I really hate this phone. I've been using Blackberries for the last 10 years, since 2004, nonstop. Been upgrading my Blackberries every year to the latest Blackberry. Finally, I thought it was time to get an iPhone 5S. Uh, I waited. Uh, I was going to get the 5 last year, but I waited for the S version to come out. Um, really excited with the fingerprint read. It's, it's actually really, really good. It works. First off, that's like the only thing that I like about this phone so far. I've never had an iPhone before. I've used iPhones. My friends all have iPhones. I know everything there is. Kind of, I thought I knew everything there was about iPhones. I had an iPod Touch I've been using since 2007. Uh, and I love my iPod Touch, it never failed on me, I still have it today. So I decided, you know, I'll just do iPhone since I usually walk around my iPod Touch and my Blackberry. So I would have my Blackberry handle my business stuff, my emails, my messaging, all that stuff, emails, phone calls, and my iPod Touch would play music. So here I am thinking I could combine the two into the iPhone 5S. This is the top of the food chain of mobile handheld devices in terms of phones, media, all that stuff, social media. So I'm just going to go down my issues with this with this product right now. First of all, in the box, it comes with literally not this thing. Uh, I pay, I got a really good deal for this with T-Mobile because I've been a customer with them for a long time. But if you stood in line and waited for this iPhone, you pay probably paid a thousand dollars for for one of these things in the 64 gigabyte ones. I think it starts at like 700 and then goes up. Unlocked. This is unlocked. T-Mobile sells there is unlocked. And literally, it comes with nothing in the box. Just headphones, the charger, and uh, case with stickers in it. There's literally nothing in the box. Like, <laughs> there's nothing in here. It's, this is a thousand dollar phone. I mean, people paid thousands of dollars for these things and it comes with nothing. And I think this is the first time I've ever bought something for that much amount of money where there's literally no instructions on how to use this product in the box. Uh, I'm computer savvy, so I kind of figured that was cool up until I started using it when I realized iOS 7 is a big upgrade from the previous iOS um, versions that I've used in the past and right off the bat the phone function. I don't like the phone function on this phone because it muddles the contact list and there's no speed dial. I'm used to having a speed dial on the Blackberry keypad but this keypad does not have a speed dial on the keypad. Um, biggest disappointment. Also the call, the, the log for your phone calls sort of, I don't know, I've made a couple of phone calls over the last two weeks I've had this phone and it seems like it deletes it I'm not sure someone could probably correct me it seems like it deletes the contact list of your call contacts uh, maybe 10 days I'm not sure why it's doing that but it seems to just keep deleting my contacts uh, as you know like tomorrow so it'll just go 10 days back and then like two days from now it'll go like 10 days back from then I'm not sure why it's doing that <laughs> you know but it's really annoying because sometimes you make phone calls on a day-to-day -day basis but you don't want to store a number in your phone you probably just want to like keep them on your call contact list the blackberry would store numbers that you call uh, indefinitely for like i think i had numbers on my blackberry that i never stored in the phone but just stayed in my call log for like months at a time here it deletes it i'm not sure why it's doing that also the ringtone on this the ringtones is really really light it's really hard to hear there's also no led um led um alert to let you know you missed the phone call so if you, you're in a business meeting and the phone is on the table and you basically would get like maybe a little message that comes up on there and it'll just go right back to sleep so unless you're like looking at the phone all the time or holding the phone all the time it's really easy to miss calls or messages or emails on this phone this is not a business friendly phone in terms of like people that's going to be in an office meeting and you don't, you don't want to have your phone on but you want to you know have your phone on the side while you're having a discussion or conversation if you're giving a presentation you know you might get a red blinking LED or the Blackberry you could modify there was an app for the Blackberry you could have a purple or yellow or green or, or different color orange LED for different indi indications of what you're missing or what messages coming through whether it's an email or text message or phone call here there's no LED indication it pops up in a little um, thing in the screen and it disappears and the ringtone being really low um, I have my phone always turned up it's really easy to miss stuff like this I live in New York City I work in Midtown Manhattan it's, you're not gonna hear a phone ringing even if it's 
loud. But here, it's not even that loud, and it's really easy to miss stuff. And now, I realize I've had lots of friends with iPhones miss my call, my text messages, and my emails over the years. Now, I realize why. I've always yelled at them, like, you didn't hear me calling you, you didn't get my email, you didn't get my text. Now, I actually realize why they always miss my, um, my, my text messages or my emails. Next thing coming down, email management on this phone is really, really horrendous. It, I use Gmail, Outlook, formerly Hotmail. Yahoo AOL and I signed up for iCloud and it's all muddled together in this one big folder where some of the email is pushed some isn't some emails you only get when you open up the email application and say I go into my Outlook or my Gmail and sometimes when I do this or all the times when I do this I'll get I'll start getting my emails so it doesn't stop pushing the emails and Sometimes I have to open up the email to make sure I'm getting emails. It's really, really um, convoluted. And some emails you could delete from the BlackBerry. Some, especially Gmail, like if you want to delete, um, I got an email from Tottenham Hotspur. I want to delete this. There's no delete button for this email. There's no delete function for this email. I could only archive it or store it into another folder. And when I do that, then I have to go into this account section into my Gmail and then I have like a whole bunch of Gmail folders that I don't really want I don't really want to look at I don't really want to sort through to be able to delete an email it's really really annoying um, that the email management I, since to deal with that I've downloaded Boxer it sort of helps make email more legible um, it sort of sorts emails out almost as good as a blackbird is also an email message hub which is really really cool in the boxer app i paid six dollars for this app by the way it wasn't free but this is what the blackberry did for free and it did much much better than this boxer app but the boxer app is uh... it's saving my life because i've been first week i've had this phone i missed so many emails that was important because of the stupid the way it organizes emails on iphone it's not an email device it's not um... It's not a business device. Like if you are in business and your emails are really important to you and responding to emails right away is very important to you. And I know there's people out there that work in the finance field or, or law field or business field where emails are important to them. So I know I'm not like complaining about nothing. This is very important for some people. And the iPhone is not not for um, email friendly thing. Another thing with the emails is that if you reply to an email and you want to put pictures in that email or attach a document to that email it's really 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 hard to do that you'd have to cut and paste from your uh, picture folder and it's really really complicated and the end result is sometimes you just want to attach a picture to the bottom of an email the end result is this like I replied to this guy I sold some stuff and it puts the pictures inside the email it's not in a separate attachment so my re recipient is gonna have to wait for all my pictures to load and the pictures the iPhone takes are you know pretty big pictures you could you do have an option of shrinking the pictures down but when you do that it shrinks it down to like little cubes but so I tend to keep my pictures large so my recipients could see what I'm sending them but I also don't want my pictures in the email I would like an attachment separate to that um, email so the recipient can read my email and then decide oh, I want to open a picture without having to wait for everything to load and then have to read through the email or look through the pictures. Some, I don't want that and there's no way around that. I, w I went to the Apple store, I, I spoke to um, the IT department my job, people that have been using iPhones for years didn't even realize there's an issue with that and they're like oh yeah there's an issue with that but I guess if it's not important to most people then it's n Apple or whoever <coughs> works in this is not going to fix it. But it's one thing coming from a BlackBerry, I realized that the iPhone doesn't do well or doesn't, it does a really crappy job of it. Also, in terms of the email and messaging, there, well, iMessage and um, the way the iPhone manages messages, there's no, um, there's no time code for the messages that you get. Like BlackBerry would do time codes. I think Android phone do time codes, but Black iPhone does not do time codes for text messages when they come in. So my friend texts me on Tuesday, but I have no idea when or where this text conversation ended. I don't know the time. I don't know if it was in the morning, if it was in the night. So it doesn't do that. But also a lack of a messaging hub where I could have all my email and text messages in one sort of one sort of location on this phone. It's sort of annoying because on the BlackBerry you could go to one hub to get all your messages, all your text messages, all your emails, 
your WhatsApp, your BBMs, all went to one sort of central location in the phone. Here, it's just scattered all over the apps, so you could have uh, notifications coming in separately on different apps. But I would like, I prefer like one hub, one messaging hub, and the lack of that makes it a little bit frustrating. When it comes to managing emails and managing text messages, it's really, really frustrating. Uh, moving on, the alarm function on this phone, I haven't figured it out yet. It's kind of annoying because the BlackBerry, you could turn it off overnight, have the phone completely off, and set your alarm to wake you up at 6.30 with the phone turning off. So you can keep your phone off, completely off, overnight. With this, it has to be on all the time for the alarm function to work. You can't have your phone, you can't have your phone off, turned off at all overnight. So what that means is this phone will be laying. This is a do not disturb function, but I, it still receives a signal. It, it's just a do not disturb. It's just like a silent. I guess it puts the phone in silence. So you don't get um, you don't get uh, woken up by a phone call or a text message or whatever. Here it has to be on, and that I guess cell phone radiation. I've never had that issue with a BlackBerry. I could always turn a, my BlackBerry off during the night or even set it to come off automatically. It wasn't something I had to do physically. Here, you have to physically do stuff to it. But it has to be on regardless for an alarm to wake you up. And that being said, the alarm isn't even that loud so far. I haven't really used the ringtones. You could use um, music from your iTunes folder to wake you up. I haven't you really used that yet, but um, the alarm choices that they give you, the tones, are really, really low. Uh, no, I went over the LED notification. And my biggest gripe, my last gripe, I'm going to end this on this. It's been 10 minutes now. A big gripe is the Facebook app. The Facebook app on the iPhone really, really sucks ass. I'm sorry. It, it's really bad. Like, there's no way of deleting messages. I can't delete these messages. I can't delete them. So, like, if I'm messaging someone, I can't delete them from the iPhone. I have to go to my computer to do that. Uh... If I commented on someone's picture or I like something, I, there's no way to unfollow this. So every time someone sneezes or coughs or, or likes something that I commented on earlier during the day, all day long I'm going to be bombarded by notifications that someone that I don't know commented and someone that I do know a picture or a comment or phrase or whatever. There's no way to take that off, and I haven't figured that out yet. I guess I have to go back to YouTube, because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos to figure out most of the stuff on iPhone, which I should already know, because I've used iPhones in the past, but it's just so frustrating. When you, you pay a lot for this product, and every time you use a feature on the product, you realize there's a shortcoming of this product compared to a BlackBerry, the BlackBerry that I previously had, um, the BlackBerry Bold. So, the Facebook is just really, really crappy. Also, notifications and linking Facebook to my contacts and my calendar is very limited to what I could do. What the option that the iPhone gives you is that you could either link all or none to your contacts. So, I have my mail, my contacts, and uh, go to my contacts. So, actually, it's not even in here. It's And everything is the settings. You have to go back to the settings. So I have my Facebook here installed, and I can link it to cancel. I can link it to my contacts, my calendar. But when you link it to your calendar, every invite you get on Facebook it clutters your calendar. So if you like, say I like the book club at a on Barnes and Noble's book club. I like them on Facebook, and they have events like every Friday night, every Tuesday night. It goes right to my calendar through my Facebook, and I have these big blocks of events in my calendar that I'm not gonna attend to, that I don't really care for, and the only way I could take them off my calendars through going to Facebook and saying I don't want to go to that event or physically having to do this every time to clear my calendar of the clutter. Also my contacts, it links all your contacts from your Facebook to your, um, your phone book on the phone. Even if there's no phone number there, it's just, it would be just someone's name. And it's just really, really annoying. It took me the first couple of days to figure out why the phone had all these extra names. And it duplicate contacts as well. And also the contacts in the iPhone, the contact list, also links your email contacts. So basically what you'll have in your contact is I had over a thousand contacts. Because everyone I emailed on my Outlook, my Hotmail, from like 1998 to now was in my contact book. And the only way to do this, to not have everyone in your contact, your phone book, in your cell phone, is to go into contacts and just unlink everything. And I'm, I, I think it's, it's very 
um, black and white. I mean, there should be an option where I want some things linked and some things not linked. Like I want maybe events on my Facebook linked, like birthdays are important to me. I want those linked. I don't want every event on my Facebook linked to my iPhone. I don't want every contact in all the emails I use linked to my um, phone book on my iPhone. It's just really annoying. It's like either or, or you can't have it. So it's like I had to unlink everything and manually put stuff in that I that I do want linked to my on my my iPhone. So it's really really annoying. The BlackBerry did not have that issue at all. Um, the BlackBerry gave the user the option of. Linking some things to uh, Facebook or your Hotmail accounts, you could link some contacts, you could not link some other contacts. It wasn't this black or white where you can't or you cannot. So that's, those are my gripes. And the last thing is the battery life in this thing. is really good as everyone's saying, but to get good battery, you have to have basically the backlight turned down to like about 30% all the time. The minute you have the backlight on bright, the battery starts draining at a really, really quick, quick rate. Also, their location services and LTE I usually keep off. LTE is fast, but unless you walk around watching YouTube videos or Netflix all the time, you do not need LTE to be even on. It burns battery like crazy, so I, keep, I turn LTE off because I'm not usually watching YouTube or Netflix all the time on my iPhone. Um, basic phone calls, basic emails, basic messaging, even if you're on YouTube, it's not going to burn that much data. LTE it just burns the battery more than it would help. Um, push data to your phone quicker. Also you have privacy and location services is a bunch of things that you download to your phone that uses your battery uses your GPS antenna in the phone. I don't even know why some of these things would want to use my GPS antenna but uh, like Vine, like Vine, I don't know why Vine wants to use my GPS antenna uh, but it does but the end result of that ends up burning my battery so I tend to keep all these off or limit what I want using my GPS antenna on this iPhone and that's the only way to keep the battery life up so in a way you sort of like buy this thousand dollar phone 64 gigabyte iPhone 5s really nice phone really beautiful I'm taking it out of the case so you guys can see it really beautiful phone so it's like buying a Ferrari and you know driving it like 20 miles an hour all the time because you keep, the gas is too expensive or something like that so it's like buying this high price object but you can't get the most out of it because it, the battery will die really quickly or whatever so it's just it's very disappointing to me my iPhone experience has been two weeks with this iPhone I'm at my I think my last two days before I can return it to T-Mobile and I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna return this and get the maybe the Blackberry I had the Blackberry Bold 9900 I'm gonna get the I'm sorry the 9790 Blackberry Bold I'm just gonna get the Q10 QWERTY Bold I also missed my hard keys as well I wanted to keep this phone. I really, really did. I really gave this. I was ready to return this after the first week, but my friends, my family were like, oh, no, hold on to it. Um, the positive things, I, I've discovered lots of really great apps on this phone, like Instagram. I've never used Instagram before. Um, Instagram is really great. Vine. I love Vine. Uh, Scout Mob. Yelp. Um, I watch soccer, football. I have a bunch of apps for um, soccer and stuff like that on this um, phone. But I gotta go back to the Blackberry. Like, I really. It's not even that I, I like Blackberries or love Blackberries. There are things about Blackberries I really hate. But this iPhone is a really, really. Um, I don't even know why people waited in line two weeks for these things or why people stand outside Apple stores for weeks at a time for this because it's, it's literally just a toy. Um, it's, if I was 17 or 16. It'll be, I'd be ecstatic to have one of these in my pocket. Or, uh, you know, but. I, you know, I'm a business person, and business things are sort of more important to me than apps and Instagram, and, you know, it's there's things more important than that to me, so this has to go back. I'm sorry, T-Mobile. Sorry, iPhone, Apple people, but your product sucks. I'm sorry. It's a really bad product.